Your fourth answer was? 300. Correct. Yes. Got the refresh rate right of my monitor, yeah. And that's interesting because that went from 240 to 300. I'm genuinely excited to be sharing my findings of 144, 240, slash 270, and 300 hertz and above monitors. Now this video has not been sponsored by anyone. It's actually more for my own curiosity and as someone who shoved over 8 years and 2,500 hours on competitive Counter-Strike. And yes, as a side note, I'm nowhere near a professional or even a semi-pro. I just like playing competitive games, probably just like yourself. Furthermore, I also have reviewed over 230 monitors, so hopefully my findings and in terms of the objective and subjective data that I'll be sharing with you will be helpful for you to make your own informed purchasing decision. Now the monitor specs will be on your screen right now. There's one from Acer, which I own, and two from AOC, which have kindly lent me for a prolonged amount of time, allowing me to really transition to a 240Hz monitor or above, and to see how my overall experience fares in comparison to having used a 144Hz monitor for a good portion of five years. So jumping straight in, let's talk about the monitor response times. Now I would like to point out that all of them were running on their extreme mode overdrive. Yes, you will get a little bit of RGB overshoot in certain instances, but in my case, while playing a game such as CSGO, which looks a bit like a potato, they were all perfectly playable and are the modes I would recommend. Now for me to demonstrate the objective numbers, I'm using the OSRTT tool, which is absolutely excellent. You can see at the bottom left hand side of your screen, the average initial time. This resides for average G to G, which you often see quoted by manufacturers. Now with the Acer, I have got it at 6.41 milliseconds, and that's not exactly a really incredible figure, but remember this Acer monitor is actually pretty old. Now if I were to look at a bit more of a modern monitor which used the same sort of testing methodology such as the AOC AG275QXL which is a League of Legends branded monitor and runs natively at 170Hz you can see over here that this 1440p panel has an average initial time of just 259 milliseconds. You can see of course there's a lot more RGB overshoot but even if we were to tail it down one little notch and go down one single mode on the overdrive setting you're still getting an average initial time of 3.19 milliseconds. Effectively, what I'm trying to say over here is that the response time of 144 or 170 hertz 1440p panels are very impressive. So what about when it comes to the 270 hertz AOC AG 275QZ? Well, here you can see on its strong mode overdrive yet again that we're getting an average initial time of just 2.88 milliseconds, which is very impressive to say the least. But let's go on to the AOC Aegon AG274QS, the 300Hz monitor. Here you can see on its maximum overdrive, we are just getting an average initial time of 2.89 milliseconds, which is absolutely ridiculous. Indeed, even if I were to go down the different refresh rate ranges, such as 270Hz at 2.86 milliseconds, or 240Hz at 3.69 milliseconds, and we can even go further down to 200Hz at 3.39 milliseconds, 144Hz at 3.39 milliseconds and 120 hertz at 3.52 milliseconds and even 60 hertz at 3.88 milliseconds. Now effectively what I'm trying to convey over here is that all the monitors have effectively got a pretty comparable response time which is something that we can take out of the equation and yes granted the Acer is a little bit slower in comparison to the two AOCs on test but if we take a bit more of a modern 1440p 144 to 170 hertz panel you can see actually that sort of monitor would also compete toe-to-toe -to -toe with higher refresh rate monitors. So if response time is something of a concern, and of course not all monitors are equal, you can see in this particular test response time is not something that I'm going to actually have to worry about. All of them are pretty class leading in their own right. So what about when it comes to input lag? Well here I actually had them objectively tested. The AOC AG274QS, the 300Hz panel, clocked in at just one millisecond. The Acer XF270HU, which I've been gaming on for over five years, actually clocked in at just 1.6 milliseconds, making it absolutely really impressive, specifically for a monitor of its time in roughly 2015, 2016 that it was produced. As for the AOC AG275QZ, 
the 240, 270 hertz monitor, it actually clocked in at just zero to 0 0.5 milliseconds. Indeed, it is absolutely stonkingly good in terms of the overall input lag that it offers. So objectively, when it comes to the monitor's input lag, they're actually yet again on par with each other. They're all very impressive monitors when it comes to hardcore competitive gaming. And you can see why that I've been using the Acer for a prolonged amount of time because its input lag and actually the overall response time of it are all very good. However, what we've been talking about here is the input lag of the monitor itself, but not about the overall system latency. And this is where frame times comes into the equation. Now, by no stretch of the imagination am I an expert on this, and I actually had to do a lot of background reading. I would suggest checking down in the description below for some excellent articles and videos by fellow creators, which actually explain frame time a little bit better. Now, what you should know is that frame time is the time that it takes for a singular frame to be rendered and displayed on your monitor. Now, depending on how fast your monitor's refresh rate is, it means that the frame time can effectively be lowered and therefore meaning that the overall system latency can also be lowered. Again, that is different from the overall input lag of said monitor, but is actually factored into the equation. Now, what I'll want you to actually look at over here is to see the differences between the frame times and the overall input lag that you're getting between the different refresh rate ranges. Between 60 hertz and 144 or even 120 hertz, you're getting a massive jump. But between 144 and 240 hertz, that time is significantly shrunk down. Furthermore, as we go up in terms of the overall refresh rate ranges, between 240 and even 390, it is a lot more minimal, let alone if we're looking at 500. What I'm trying to emphasize over here is that the higher refresh rate monitors will have a overall lower latency. However, it is worth considering that you have diminishing returns as you go up the refresh rate ranges. Now for me to demonstrate it, I'm using the OSRTT tool, which I just have to give a quick shout out to Andrew from Tech Team GB for creating such a useful measuring device. Now this is actually similar to how you'd find it on the NVIDIA latency display analyzer tool, that for short, which you'll see quoted by other reviewers, and in this respect operates in a somewhat similar way. Now here you can see the on display lag and total input lag, which are the figures that I will want you to concentrate on. Blue is the average, minimum is orange, and green is maximum. Really, you want to be concentrating on the average because it come once takes the spread and gives you an average time. Now, on the Acer, which as a reminder is 1440p, 144 hertz, we're getting an average of three milliseconds on the on display lag, while the total input lag sits at roughly five milliseconds. So it is actually pretty impressive. And here you can see how the spread is when it comes to having the 20 clicks, which is the test cycle that I use. So now we move over to the AOC AG275QS. At 240 hertz, you can see that this time has now decreased, again looking at the averages, at 1.8 milliseconds and 3.7 milliseconds respectively. The graphs might actually throw you a little bit off, but just bear in mind the numbers have changed. So if you look on the left hand side of your screen, they will change depending on which monitor we're looking at. So just bear that in mind. Now, as we then transition to 270 hertz, you can see the times have slightly decreased, but they're very much similar. The on display lag sits at 1.7 milliseconds or thereabouts, and the total input lag sits at 3.7 milliseconds. So what about when it comes to a 300 hertz monitor? You can see here that the average has yet again decreased a little bit at 1.5 milliseconds with the total input lag sitting at roughly 3.3 milliseconds. So this is all very impressive and you can see here how the overall frame times that I was referencing before and the overall input lag that one can attain at higher refresh rate monitors does have an impact in terms of your actual system latency, not only in terms of the actual monitor's input lag. Now, just for me to demonstrate it and to make it a somewhat level playing field, the AOC AG274QS, I have got a multitude of different tests. 
Here you can see it's running at 240 hertz, clocking in at 1.7 and 3.5 milliseconds, respectively. Going down to 144 hertz, you can see it increases to 2.8 and 4.8 milliseconds, respectively. And at 60 hertz, we have got a whopping 11 and 14 milliseconds, respectively. So again, over here, using the very same panel, which would have the same sort of input lag itself, you can see that the overall system latency is impacted as we go up and indeed go down the refresh rate range. Now, moving past this, I would also like to talk about motion clarity. And as we go up the refresh rate ranges, you can see that the overall motion clarity becomes better. Yes, we're talking about three different panels over here, but hopefully this should paint a picture, pun intended. Now, there's the UFO ghosting test that you can do yourself on Blurbuster's website. It's an absolutely excellent tool and it's open to everyone to use. You can see here that the Acer does struggle and lag behind the 240 hertz or 270 hertz results, let alone the 300 hertz result which looks a lot better. Now I would like to reiterate over here that these were all on their maximum overdrive preset and there was no BFI or any sort of MBR that was in operation on any of the monitors. So, so far everything points towards higher refresh rate equals better, but what does it happen in practice? Well, I added a human test subject, i.e. me. I had reviewed over 230 monitors and played over 2,500 hours of competitive Counter-Strike, so surely someone like myself would be easily able to tell between the entire refresh rate, but that wasn't the case. Now for me to conduct my test, I had my wife change the refresh rate and that was between 60 and 300 hertz and everything in between and I looked away and blindfolded myself. This was not only a test for you guys but also for a test for me. I really wanted to tell if I could tell the difference. I also made sure that there was no sort of FPS counter on screen in order for me to give me any sort of pointers. Now here I used the desktop and then also Counter-Strike Global Offensive to conduct my tests. Now the results will be on your screen right now. Green is everything I got right, red is the things I got wrong, and next to the red results are the actual refresh rate ranges that the monitor was running at. Now I was using the AOC AG274QS for this, which is no surprise, and it is also worth pointing out that this monitor has got a low input lag mode that can be permanently enabled, however at 60Hz does get disabled. Thankfully here I was not looking at the input lag but rather how the monitor was responding to going around in certain different motions so therefore that input lag mode was somewhat out of the question making it yet again a level playing field. Now if we take the 120 hertz results that I guessed incorrectly out of the equation I actually got 8 out of 10 right. I'm not trying to give myself some extra brownie points far from it but rather the fact that if I actually had to guess between 60, 144, 240 and 300 I probably would have guessed the 144 hertz results correctly because I actually guessed 120 hertz. Now nonetheless let's actually concentrate on the two that I got wrong. Now here you can see that I guessed 144 hertz, despite actually operating at 240 hertz, which is the exact same refresh rate that it was previously running on, on the secondary test. Now I'm not sure if this was due to muscle memory, or for me potentially adding some sort of bias into it, thinking something has definitely changed when in reality nothing had, and this is of course the beauty of blindfold tests, but nonetheless it's just something you should look at. However, what's fascinating is that no matter if I got it right or wrong, I noted a difference towards the next refresh rate, which was 300 hertz. Indeed, I could tell a 60 hertz difference between 240 and 300. To me, there was a difference. And here I thought I was going from 144 to 300, but in reality, I was only adding 60 hertz. I say only, but it's still a worthwhile consideration here because we're talking about higher refresh rate monitors. Oh, this is smooth. This is really smooth. This is better than the one that we saw before, so definitely I'm, I'm pretty confident that be it 120 or 144 hertz was the last one. Mm -hmm. But this feels a bit so, I mean, if you look at the mouse trails, mm -hmm. when you're doing this, it's just quicker. Okay. When at high refresh rates, but it's slower when like 60 hertz. It's it like drags. doing this, it drags. Mm -hmm. So this, I think, I'm, because I've been accustomed to this monitor for a little bit, I think this is 300. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put 300. Equally, going from a higher refresh rate down to a lower refresh rate, such as what I'd guessed of 120, which in reality was 144, was a difference. 
Now, quite fascinatingly, I thought I went from 120 to 144 hertz in the next test. In reality, I went up to 200 hertz. So yet again, I felt that there was a bit of a difference, but not massive enough for me to guess, let's say 240 hertz. So this was yet again quite fascinating to me because looking at these results, it meant that I could tell a difference between the two refresh rate ranges, but I thought it was a lot more minimal than it actually was. It is very fluid. It just feels a bit more fluid than what we just experienced. Mm. But just going based on you know short term memory of what we tried at, at the at the start mm -hmm. and the one before last. Now going from two hundred to three hundred, yet again, I guess that there was a big jump, and I'm glad I got it right. Equally, going down from three hundred to what a supposedly one twenty was in my mind, when in reality is one four four. Yet again, I guessed it right. So to summarize my blind test, I was actually quite surprised at the fact that I could tell the difference between two hundred forty hertz and three hundred hertz. Now with that knowledge on board, I went ahead and did a different test. I had the three monitors cloned and connected over to my RTX thirty eighty, all connected via. Display port. Low input lag mode was enabled across all and adaptive sync was disabled. Aside from this, the monitors were running their native refresh rates. The left hand side Acer 144, the AOC AG 275QZ 270 in the middle, and on the right, the AOC AG 274QS at 300Hz. So I knew the refresh rate of the monitors and the overall thing that I was actually experiencing was the exact same. In other words, the image was not changing. Now, in terms of giving my own subjective opinion over here, I didn't feel that my performance was hindered at playing at 144Hz in comparison to the higher refresh rate monitors. And that's actually because if you look at the frame by frame analysis between 144 and 240 hertz, let alone let's say above monitors, the differences are very minimal. It's not like comparing 60 hertz and 144 hertz monitors. So therefore I can safely say that here my performance was pretty much on par. And yes, my spray and my overall positioning was pretty poor and that's because I was using a somewhat makeshift desk and not accustomed to using the monitor in a slight angle. But here what I'm trying to really emphasize is the fact that when I was comparing between 144 and above, it didn't feel like my performance was affected. Now that's not to say that I couldn't tell the overall fluidity of these high refresh rate monitors. Indeed, even just going based on my blind test, I was able to tell it. So therefore, knowing the refresh rate of the monitors that I'm looking at now, I could actually tell the fluidity that was a little bit better on these high refresh rate monitors. Now, is the fluidity going to give me a competitive advantage? No. As I've just mentioned before, it just really doesn't make a difference. It just means that the overall feel of the monitor is just better and it just seems to flow a lot better. Now, indeed, in this respect, if you're a hardcore competitive gamer, you'll appreciate a high refresh rate monitor. Is it a game changer going to make you a better gamer? Is it going to improve your spray patterns and therefore your positioning in game? Absolutely not. That is something that you should train separately and it doesn't really matter what sort of refresh rate you're running. Even 60 hertz pros will completely outfrag someone who's running a 390 hertz monitor. So in this respect, what I'm trying to iterate is that the higher refresh rate monitors were certainly tuned for hardcore competitive gamers like myself. However, for those people who are not falling in that category and are potentially contemplating between higher refresh rate monitors, you might want to save yourself money and get a lower refresh rate monitor. So with all that information that you've hopefully soaked up, what would I recommend? Well, if you're a single player RPG RTS type of gamer, I'd look at around 144 hertz mark, purely because the investment that you would have had to done on spending on a higher refresh rate monitor could have gone elsewhere. For example, a higher resolution monitor or indeed another component within your computer. If you are, however, a hardcore competitive gamer like myself and you play a game like CSGO or Valorant as your primary game, then you might want to look at a higher refresh rate monitor and therefore prioritizing it over resolution or indeed another component. Indeed, in this respect, for example, other peripherals. Purely because you're getting a smoother experience, lower system latency, and also potentially you might be able to have a little bit of a bettered experience. But it's not gonna make you a better gamer. Far from it, and it's not gonna give you a massive competitive edge in comparison to going between 60 and 144 hertz. Now, what about if you're a hardcore fanatic in terms of playing esports titles on a day-to-day -day basis and you also want to go professional or indeed you are challenging for the top echelons of those leagues. Well in this respect you will want to go for the highest refresh rate monitor that is plausible. For the reasons that I've explained before and indeed in this respect budget will have to come into mind and also in terms of the resolution that you'll be able to attain. Just bear in mind that of course your GPU is also important so make sure that you pair that up considerably in terms of the resolution that you're aiming 
aiming at achieving with your monitor. Now, hopefully all of these recommendations and my own personal suggestions have been useful for you. And furthermore, the analysis throughout this video has given you some sort of indication between the different refresh rate ranges. But I'd be curious to know which one you would pick down in the comment section below, be it if you're on a budget or not. Now, if you've liked this informative video and want to see more like this, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.